trying to get back to you. This Emerald City's getting old. Traveling over the rainbow. Somewhere only you and I know. Getting off this yellow brick road. Headed for the streets of gold. Humble heart on bended knees. 
humble heart on bended knee. I'm begging you, please help me. Okay, everybody can take their seats and get comfortable. Get your Bibles ready. I want to say hello to all and sundry that are watching. This is the Children of the Free Church Ministry. My name is Charles Garcia. I'm the teaching pastor or pastoring teacher. Some of you old timers may know me as Buddy Garcia. This is a faith based ministry. And we gather here every Sunday evening live at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for the teaching. Archives of the teaching are available free at childrenofthefree.com as well as on YouTube. Now we'll see a little bit more about this in a minute, but in order to make sure that we get this word out, to as many people as possible, this word of truth. Whenever you have the option to push like, please push like. Or subscribe, push subscribe. We're not going to fill your mailbox. We're not going to charge you anything. It's free. It just allows us to notify you the church is about to start or that we're going to have an unscheduled church service. That's what the subscribe is part. Um, We have a lot of new watchers. Possibly, literally, thousands. So, I'm going to start tonight with some basics regarding trust and faith used in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and then some basics on the promises of God, and then to tonight's message. What does faith mean in English? You'll find various definitions, but most of them have something to do with Believing in something that you can't see. Right? Yes, sir. Well, when we talk about faith here, or use it in Scripture, it's a New Testament Greek word translating, translated as faith, translating pistis or pisteo, depending on whether you're using the noun or the verb form. In the verb form, it means action. Okay, get that? Action. Based on belief, sustained by confidence, that God will do, God will do what he said. So right off the bat, you can see that faith is not something that you have, and we all say have faith. It's something that you do. Action based on belief, sustained by confidence that God will do what he said. Most often in the Bible, the word is translated as faith, occasionally as trust. Now, in the Old Testament, there are three words. 
commonly translated as trust. The first word is hasa, and the Hebrew is a, hip, a pictorial language, so picture this in your mind because it says it all. Hasa means to run to the shelter of a rock or to run to the shelter of an outstretched mother bird's wings. That's trust. Second word, batak. And that means to lean your full weight on a staff. I'm not talking about a shepherd's staff that's 10 feet tall and obviously you hold your weight. I'm talking about something more like a walking staff or a cane. Lean your full weight on it, trusting that it's not going to break or cause any splintering to happen to your hand. The third word is actually more properly pronounced Aman, but most people say Amen. And that means to constantly, continually, or immediately trust in God and your circumstances. Now, in order to show trust and faith in God, you call on his promises from Scripture that apply to your circumstances. You're sick. The promise is, I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you're destitute, the promise is, I am the Lord that provideth. And these are just examples. You'll find the healing example in Exodus 15, if you want to jot that down and go there. And the provision in Genesis 22. Although in Genesis 22, it doesn't say, I am the Lord that provideth when there's no sacrifice for Abram when he takes Isaac up the hill he says the Lord will provide and then he names that place Jehovah Jireh which means I am the Lord that provideth the Bible is full of promises now if you're new at this, there is a catch-all promise you find, and you need to write this down, 2 Corinthians 22. Let's go there. 2 Corinthians 22. You're trying to claim promises that apply to your particular set of circumstances that you're dealing with. 2 Corinthians verse 20, it says, For all, not most, not some, not special, all the promises of God in Him, that means in Christ, and if you're trusting Him in faith, you're in Christ and He's in you, all the promises of God in him are yea, which means yes. And in him, amen, which means so be it unto you. So you can claim all the promises of God under this umbrella promise. Even if you can't remember that, then you talk to God in prayer and say, you know the promise, God. Whatever promise pertains to my problem, perform it in Jesus' name, and you're covered. But set about learning them. Now, God is not looking for perfection. He is surrounded by it, by angels that never miss a beat nor is he looking for righteousness. 
certainly not yours, which he views as filthy rags. He's not looking for you trying to be like him. In fact, that's an insult. His stature and righteousness compared to us is like the distance from the earth to the sun, 93 million miles. Can't do it. He's looking for trust. Satan and his cohorts didn't trust God and they were cast down. Adam and Eve didn't trust God and they were cast out. Uh, Tonight's message will elaborate some and illustrate some of these principles as we go along. I want you to go with me to Psalm 37. Now I'm going here because I need this message. So does the family. And I dare say Many others out there that are watching need this. Show me a show of hands when you get to 37. It's a relatively long psalm. We're actually going to go through the whole thing. But the initial part of this is the most important, which we'll return to. And it starts out by saying, well, let me backtrack. Read all that we're going to read tonight in the context of your current problem. It can be sickness. It can be finances. It can be emotions. It can be all of the above. So you read this in that context. Very first thing he says in Psalm 37 is fret not. And in the Hebrew, what's being said here is don't burn up. It's another way of saying stay cool or cool it or chill out, right? Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the worshipers of iniquity. Well, that's an easy one to see nowadays, especially with our administration and our politicians. For they shall soon be cut down. Like the grass and wither as the green herb. Then he says, trust in the Lord. And the word that's being translated trust here is batak, that's lean on him. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. Probably best transliterated is Appreciate God. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Number five, commit thy way unto the Lord. And then it says, trust also in him. And again, the word batak, that leaning trust word, is placed there. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 6 says, He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. But I'm going to pause and go back to tell you, remember you have a problem or problems. Lean on God. Trust on the Lord. Appreciate what he is what he does and he'll give you the desires of your heart and then it says commit thy way unto the Lord 
And that's using terminology from the olden caravan days when they were loading up their loads onto camels. The camels would get down on all fours, and then you would take the load off of your back. You'd go up to the side of the camel and roll it onto the camel's back. That's what it's saying to do with your problem to God. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Roll your problem onto God's back. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 7. Hard part. Rest in the Lord. And wait, it says, patiently, should be with endurance for him. Fret not, it says again, second time, thyself, because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. All those people you see around you getting away with murder. Verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Again, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. You don't have to do anything about it. Why? Because the evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now this other wait that it said to rest in the Lord and wait patiently, that means that, wait patiently. This wait means to tend to as a waiter or to tend to God's business, tend on the Lord. The evildoer shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Yet for a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and shall not be. At some time, oof, they're going to be gone. Then it goes on to say, just a wonderful mistranslation is here, but the meek shall inherit the earth. And I like to say they're not talking about Dorothy Gale and the Wizard of Oz. Meek is translating a word that's best translated as tamed. You can take a wild beast, a wild animal, and tame it to behave. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Again, the wicked plotteth against the just. Who is the just? When you act in faith, trusting God, he looks at you just as if you're Jesus, even though you aren't. And those are the just. The wicked plotteth against the just. So that means us. And gnashes upon with his te- him with his teeth, trying to get you, chew you up. Verse 13. The Lord shall laugh at him. For he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to hurt? No. To slay such as be of upright conversation. They're not talking about the way you talk. There's some, they're talking about someone who's been converted to be upright which means you're the just. So again, he's talking to us. The the evil ones intend to slay such as be of an upright conversation. Well, their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Now we've talked about the upright, the just, and the righteous. Same groups of people, those that trust God and act in faith in that trust. The Lord knoweth. He knows you. On Mount Sinai, he didn't say to Moses, he didn't say, hey, shepherd, 
He said, Moses, he knows you. He knows the days of the upright. He knows what you're going through. And their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine, which are right around the corner. They shall be satisfied, but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke and they shall consume away. What's a nice way of saying they're going to fry into smoke. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. There's power in giving. For such as be blessed Him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Now remember, don't lose track of the context that we're reading this and that problem that you have, that sickness, that emotional problem, that financial problem that you're having. It says here, the steps of a good man, good as in italics. It's added by the translators not in the original, should really be a committed man. The steps of a committed man or woman are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Listen carefully to this part. Though he fall, it doesn't say if he falls, does it? Though he fall, that means you're going to fall. He shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Just like it says in Deuteronomy, the underneath are everlasting arms. I've been young, and now I'm old, yet... Have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread? Now this has a double meaning to it because we are the children of God, so we are his seed. He's not going to see his seed begging bread. <clears throat> but that also applies to our seed, that our seed, our offspring, will not be begging bread or forsaken. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed again. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. Thus, they are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous us, shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the of the right the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh judgment. The law of God is in his heart. You could in essence stop going to church or not being able to go to church and throw all the Bibles away. His law is in your heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to what? Slay him. He wants to kill you. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. What's his way? The way of faith. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, 
thou shalt see it. I've seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree, yet he passed away, and lo, it was not. God. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man. Again, we're talking about the complete man. And behold the upright, for that end of that man is peace. The transgressor shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous, that's us, is of the Lord. He is their strength. He is their strength in the time of trouble, which is in the middle of that problem you rolled over onto him. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust him. And this word trust being translated is hatha, to run to the shelter of a rock. Not stroll or meander, run. One thing that I left out, I'd like to point out here in the essence of the message where it's saying, trust in the Lord, delight thyself, and commit thy way and rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Once you roll it on to him, you need to leave it alone and let him take it. The illustration that Dr. Scott used to use and I sometimes use is you're driving down the street and you see your man with his hand and arm inside of a mailbox. You can't help but stop and say, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm mailing this really important letter to Houston, but I want it to go through Phoenix because if it goes through Denver, there's a big storm going on over there. You can't turn something over to God and then slap your head and go, God, what are you doing? You've turned it over to him and you have to accept how he works it out and how he does things. Now, I want you to go with me. Well, you can't go with me. I can go with me. If you still have the old handouts from the old days, I have written down in the front of my Bible a synopsis of the lesson that we just did. This is called Committing Your Way. We're all committing a way or more right now. Commit your way. Fret not. Fret not, fret not. He repeats himself. Pay attention when he does that. Your part, trust him. Delight in him. Commit your way. Rest in him. Wait patiently. His part. The Lord worketh. The Lord knoweth. The Lord orders. He upholdeth. He forsaketh not. And he delivers. And if you want it in a written out prose form, it's like this. Can God be trusted? Yes. Yes. Love him for what he did for you. Roll your burden onto him, rest in him, and wait patiently. He immediately goes to work with knowledge to order your steps. You're going to stumble, but he'll uphold you, and he won't forsake you, and he'll deliver you. And that's my message tonight. And it's offering time. Don't give unless you've been taught. If you've been taught, 
you share materially with the one that taught you. It says that in Galatians 6.6. 6. If you've been taught in the Word, you communicate. The Word is koinonia. Jointly participate. And then it goes on to say, in all good things with the one that taught you. We don't raise money for projects or for need. You give for teaching that you've already received. For the offertory, we're going to have. I know some of you old timers would like to have me get back into teaching more on the pyramid and on the stars and the heavens and on Stonehenge, which we haven't gotten to yet. One one never knows, does one? We may get into those things, but I'm compelled and I'm driven now to get the basics out there to allow his called and chosen ones to be able to make it through these end times. As I said early on, so we can spread this word out, please push like on your computer and please please push prescribe on your computer so that we can get the message out there. For those of you who may be concerned, my health is improving, wounds are healing, 
I'm still getting IV antibiotics. That's what this is. And I'll keep you posted on what's going on. In the meanwhile, the only way to make it is faith, faith, faith. So I'm going to play our theme song and tell you to keep on walking in faith. Well, I searched and I searched for a road that led to glory. I wondered if I'd ever find my way. I was so dismayed for the road. It seemed so lonely. But then I heard a voice within me say, You've got to keep on walking right on walking, walking in the light of the Lord. You'll get to heaven someday, can only get in the faith way, walking in the light of the Lord. Well, I faked and I faked, and the Lord, He gave me mercy. I faked. Then I heard a voice within me say, You've got to keep on walking, keep right on walking, walking in the light of the Lord. You'll get to heaven someday, can only get in the faith way, walking in the light. You've got to keep on walking, keep it right on walking, walking in the light of the Lord. You'll get to heaven someday, can only get in the faith way, walking in the light of the Lord. Walking in the light. Walking in the light.